welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Today we're going to learn how to jam on a Beatles song uh, that doesn't really have a jam or a guitar solo in it, and not only how to jam with a backing track, but how to jam by yourself if you're just playing this alone. And so before we get started, make sure you click that subscribe button and share this with anyone who you think will enjoy it. Uh, the song of choice today is Don't Let Me Down, uh, a rather simple chord progression. I was just studying some Beatles stuff on the weekend, the song popped into my head, I started playing it, and right at the end of a verse, I started jamming on it. And then I said, you know, I, I don't think there's a jam on it. Listen to it. Uh, there is a piano solo or organ solo at the end. And then I, uh, I Googled or YouTubed, um, you know, this live to see if there was any bands that have done this live. And sure enough, Keith Urban and John Mayer have a really good version of it. Um, and I figured, you know, we can explain what they do and also explain all the options to get the most out of your guitar soloing. And so I figured, why not? All right, let's do it. The chord progression for the jam part, and most of the song, is a very simple chord progression. It's F sharp minor. To E. Now, if you watch John Lennon, he definitely has an F sharp minor 7 in here. You can see him raise the pinky, come back, and any which way you want to do it is fine. Okay? But pretty much we're dealing with an F sharp minor to an E. If you want to throw the F sharp minor 7 in there, I say go for it. All right, so how do we assess this situation? Well, first the thing I would do is I would take a look at the chords, and I did. And when you look at this, you have uh, two possible keys to think of uh, what the song is in. And so the first one would be the key of E. Here are the chords of the key of E. You can see the first chord is the E, and the second chord is an F sharp minor. Cool beans, like we're there. But there's also another option, which is uh, the F sharp minor could be the sixth chord of the key of A, and the, and the E could be the fifth chord of the key of A. But when it comes down to thinking, okay, what key would this be in? Are we going to choose a 6-5 or a 2-1? And when you listen to the solos and you listen to the song and the melodies and everything, really you can hear how the E is home. So, I'm, you know, in my mind I say, okay, it has to be the key of E, it has to be a 2-1. So how do we handle this? There are so many options to solo, and we'll talk about it. But the first thing you want to try, which for some reason is what I thought of first, is the E major pentatonic. Um, some people might say, well, what about the F sharp minor pentatonic? That's our first chord, and we'll get there. But let's just try the E major pentatonic, the pentatonic of the key. And so in order to do that, well, I'm going to play the, the simplest form of our pentatonics that we know, the form one. And to find an E, I'm going to put on some distortion here. It's going to be 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 11, 9, 12, 9, 12. If you're uh, wondering how do you find all of your E major pentatonics, this video up here will show you how to find them everywhere on the fretboard with E's. Uh, but with that being said, let's, let's do this. So I'm just going to load up the backing track, press play, and I'm going to try and solo a little bit with just this E major pentatonic. And let's see what we can get out of it. Let's see. It all work, and believe it or not, if you know the song, um, George Harrison's line really comes out of this pentatonic box, and that was another creeping suspicion. I forgot to mention that. All right, so the E major pentatonic. All right, just just to show you, I'm going to play another E major pentatonic, and I want you to play with me if you know these scales. We're going to do the form four around the fourth fret area. Again, the video I mentioned earlier uh, will show you how to find them all. And so that that pentatonic box is four seven, four seven, four six, four six, five seven. Four, seven. Let's just do the same thing and let's just rip it down here. But again, I'm being gentle. Uh, you know, I don't want to rip it right now. I'm just going to show you that it works. Let's see. Alright, 
So let's get the most amount of magic we can out of the E major pentatonic, and that's going to be very simple. Uh, let's start with the F sharp chord. Okay, the F sharp chord. We're going to come back up to this ninth fret area. Um, we have this F sharp chord here. This is an A minor shaped chord. Sorry, F sharp minor chord. And if you want to lift your pinky up, you can have your F sharp minor seven. Potato, potato, right now. Okay. And so the idea is. All of these notes are in your E major pentatonic, all of them, even if you do the F sharp minor 7, except for this note right here, except for this 10th fret of the uh, B string. And for anyone who's not playing guitar but wants to follow along, it's the A. We're not playing the A. And interestingly enough, if you listen to the ending um, solo on top of the F sharp, you can hear the E major pentatonic stuff being played, but you hear uh, that we're not playing this note. You're hearing like and we're avoiding that note, and we're still in the E major pentatonic, but we want to see those F sharp major chord tones, and they are on the ninth fret of the A, 11th fret of the D and G. Um, we're skipping over uh, this 10th fret of the uh, B string, but we do have the um, ninth fret of the high E. So these guys here are the focus notes for the F sharp minor. And how about the focus notes for the E? Well, that, that's a little bit easier because this pentatonic shape here uh, goes with uh, a G-shaped chord. Again, watch that video from about you know, three minutes ago where I linked it. Um, and you can see the, the, uh, the, the chord tones, excuse me, of the E major chord are 12 on the E, 12, 11, 9, 9, 9 on the B, also 12 on the B, and the high E string. Uh, 12th fret. So again, I'm not going to play with any bends or anything just yet. I'm just going to hit some chord tones. Well, let's see if I can travel through the E major pentatonic at the same time hitting some of those chord tones. And it starts in the F sharp, so I'm going to think about my F sharp minor chord here uh, right off the bat, and let's see if we can chase those chords but using the E major pentatonic. <laughs> Chord tones. Okay, so we got there so far. I'll put a little bend in. All right, so you can see that the E major pentatonic, while thinking of the chord tones and excluding anything that's outside of the pentatonic uh, really works well. And you can survive with that all day long. Now if you want to bend away, bend, have some fun. I, I think a great bend in the, in the major pentatonic is when you take the root note, which is an E here, grab the major second, and bend it up to the major third. Okay, you have a one, two, three, five. You can bend the five to a six if you want to. But the idea, usually it's this one to the two, and bend, bend up. Let's see if you can hear that on the E. And so on and so on. So right now, if you're playing with a backing track, the E major pentatonic is looking real good. All right, well, what about the E major scale? Now the answer is yes, of course yes. We're in the key of E, which means we're playing things out of an E major scale. But when you listen to all the solos, we don't really have this major scale type of sound being played. What we do hear is, again, I'm now referencing Keith Urban. We do hear these kind of things. Let's see if we can do this. Um, and let, let me show you. Let me show you first. Check this out. Right? You see these like kind of octave slides. And that's when we see a lot of the E major scale coming in. So let's take a look at that E major scale again and all the notes. We have E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. And uh, Keith Urban, on one of these lines, you can see him kind of do this octave on the A string and the uh, B string here, like the octave, two frets higher, two strings over. And we have an A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A, back to B, and so on. And so these frets, two, four, six, seven, nine, eleven, twelve. That's the E major scale. Of course, we're starting on the lowest, which would be a B here if we're fretting it. And he kind of like messes around on that E. Let's let's see if you can hear this. Like So 
so cool. And you can see that works. And the E major scale makes its, its appearance really with these octaves on the E chord. Now, this is my advice for you right now, okay? If you're playing with the backing track and you have the band behind you and they're playing those chord changes, the E major pentatonic following some chord tones is really going to help, all right? And on the E major scale, playing those, uh, sorry, on the E major chord, playing the E major scale will help. But let's just say you're playing this by yourself. Let's say that you're doing an acoustic performance for someone and you got a jam on it. What I'm, what I'm about to show you will always work for, of course, playing with the backing track, but it'll definitely make things a lot more cohesive, sound better if you're playing it on acoustic. So give me a second, I'll grab my acoustic, and I'll show you the difference in approach if I were playing this by myself. All right, voila, now I have my brand new Taylor AD27. Shameless plug. But now I'm, <laughs> now I'm going uh, to play the song acoustically, excuse me, acoustically. And let's just say I was playing the song, you know, don't let me do solo, if I just stuck with the E major pentatonic and hit the chord tones that were kind of there, it would sound okay, but I don't think it would carry the song as amazingly. So let me give you the example. It's just to me, it's like, well, we need more. So what is that more? Well, let's go back to the first chord now, the F-sharp minor. Now, here's something interesting. The F-sharp minor pentatonic, and this is, this, you don't need to know this, but it's inside the E major scale. We're not even going to think, we're not going to think of it like that. We're just going to say, okay, we're going to use, excuse me, we're going to use the F-sharp minor pentatonic when the F-sharp minor chord is being played. And let's just start there. And then when the, um... E chord comes, let me just go back to the E major pentatonic. Now what's cool about this is I'm going to play again up here. All right, this is my F sharp minor chord. And now the F sharp minor pentatonic, if you want to find any minor pentatonic, another video is going to be popping up right here. Um, the idea is, well now I have this form four or A minor shape pentatonic. 9, 12, 9, 12, 9, 11, 9, 11, 10, 12, 9, 12. And I can clearly see inside of it all of my F sharp minor chord tones, and I'm gonna try and use the F sharp minor pentatonic to get to those chord tones. Let's see what it's like when I use the F sharp minor pentatonic on the F sharp minor, and the E major pentatonic on the E major. up there, but I had to keep going. I was smiling because I'm like, oh, I should reshoot this. But you can hear the difference in the strength <laughs> of the F sharp minor pentatonic doing its job of kind of really speaking for the F sharp minor chord, and then the E major pentatonic really speaking for the E major chord. And that's how I would approach this if I was just on an acoustic. There's a lot more to do. To make it even better, I'm going to grab my electric in a second, but I would say, okay, F sharp minor pentatonic on the F sharp minor. But now on the E major chord, how about we utilize the full E major scale? Because that is the, um, the waiting part of the song. The, uh, the how do I explain it? You know, it, it, and it sits there and you know it's coming back to the vocals. And so 
right at that moment, we can use the E major scale completely to kind of build back up to that moment. So let me just show you really quickly what I'm going to do here. Let's just take a quick E major scale on the seventh fret of the A string. Seven, nine, six, seven, nine, six, eight, nine, seven, nine, ten, seven, nine. So when we get to the E, towards the end of the E, I might switch over from an E major pentatonic to a full-blown E major scale to bring our music, excuse me, back to the F sharp minor. Let's see. screwing up, but you know what? I'm just going to keep on going. So now, I'm going to grab my electric guitar, but I'm going to say, if you're playing on acoustic guitar, excuse me, F sharp minor pentatonics for the F sharp minor, E major pentatonics for the E major, and also some good old-fashioned E major scalage to climb back into your F sharp minor. Now I'm going to grab my electric again, and we're going to start doing even more, and even adding this theory onto it. Be right back. All right, I'm back. And so we just learned, you know, that when you're playing by yourself, you're going to really need to punch the F-sharp minor, F minor chord, excuse me. But why not do it now when you have a back track? Let's see what it sounds like when I play my F-sharp minor pentatonic on the F-sharp minor, bring in the E major pentatonic, and heck, bring in some E major scale stuff at the end of that bar to bring it back to the F-sharp minor. Let's see. lost there. So you can hear it works. F sharp minor on the F sharp and uh, E major pentatonic and E major scale. One last thing I'm going to mention before I just kind of play, okay, is um, you can see Keith Urban do this in, in the song and I, I saw it and I said, I want to explain that. There's this part where you hear him do this, like... And I, just, I just want to show you that. I just want to show you what it is and how you can throw it in. If you look at these two notes, 7th fret of the D and 7th fret of the high E, uh, the idea here is that uh, this comes from uh, an F-sharp minor chord. If you're good at the cage chord system, this is the uh, C minor shape. But this is a C, uh, an F-sharp minor chord right here. In the key of E, you have an F-sharp minor. You have this little double stop. Or sliding sixth, and you can see it in the video that I'll link in here. So many videos to link, right? And if I bring this up two frets, this is now a G, uh, sorry, uh, a G sharp minor. All right, and then now he goes to an A major right here. That comes from the C shape chord, A major, which is 11th and 10th, up to a B major, and that's in the key of E as well. All, this is in the, all of this is in the key of E. F sharp minor, uh, G sharp minor, A major, B major, and then he goes uh, to the C sharp minor, and then we're gonna, by that time, get back to the F sharp or E. So let's see if we can just sneak that in.
And so right there, I kind of went up to another F sharp minor. Now, if you want to learn how to do this all over the guitar neck, of course, I'll have a chart discussing everything, all of your F sharp minor pentatonic options, all of your E major pentatonic options, all of your E major scale options, and even that double stop run. And your goal is to pick and choose what you want to do. If you're playing with a backing track and you say, you know what, I just like the sound of the E major pentatonic, great, play with the E major pentatonic. Then put some chord tones in and say, you know what, I'm going to start putting in the F-sharp minor pentatonic on the F-sharp. And the idea is you can layer all these ideas and they all work. And if you listen and watch um, the Keith Urban John Mayer performance, you'll hear all of this stuff. You will. Um, if you listen to the Beatles version, the ending uh, piano solo or organ solo uses all of this theory as well. But now you can jam on it. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this, you know, quick-ish lesson on how to jam on uh, "Don't uh, Don't Let Me Down" uh, by the Beatles and uh, what you can do over it. Thanks again for being here. Share and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. See you on Thursday with another guitar fundamentals video. Take care.